It's the only thing I can think of with the word missing in it. Yeah, anyway. I'm probably going to get banned, but whatever. Anyway, hello there, Criterion 8 here. Don't ask. Uh, number 449, Costa Garvis's Missing, 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 Missing. 1982, 122 minutes, color, monoral, English, and Spanish, without the language, so I'm Anyway, so, an interesting film. Very dark, extremely dark. Um, it's based on a real life situation that happened back in the. Um, in 1973 in Chile, there's this war going on, this coup, um, and basically everybody was getting murdered, you know. And it's based on the true story of this guy, Charles Horman, who was a, a children's book, I guess, illustrator or something like that, but he was visiting, and he was also kind of a journalist on the side, he was a writer on the side, and so he was, you know, exploring, and I guess he ended up getting... To spoil the story, he ends up getting captured, and his, I guess his wife was was there at the same time, and um, his father came to Chile to investigate with his wife, and they tried to figure it out together, and um, yeah, they just they they didn't feel like they were getting the the treatment they deserved, and um, sure enough, it, they even were led to believe that the government killed Charles for trying to find out too much. Um, you know, at first it seems that, you know, Chile is just, you know, was a, killing everybody in sight, basically. They were setting up curfews, the armies were were just everywhere, and, you know, people were getting shot, and you could see soldiers' dead bodies laying on the ground, and it was a very, very violent time, and, um, and Charles went missing, and so his wife, um, his wife, what was, what was her name? Uh, Joyce, uh, Joyce and Ed uh, went to, you know, try to figure it out together. And, you know, I guess through, through, through a number of different sources, they discovered that, yeah, Charles had been executed. And his body, I guess, wasn't shipped, wasn't discovered and, and shipped to the, the States until like seven months after they left. And, um, yeah, so it's a kind of a very, very scary story. Um, uh, but it's, you know, and it's got, but it's got a lot of Hollywood to it with its lead actors, uh, Jack Lemmon, who plays Charles's um, dad, and Sissy Spacek, who plays his wife. Um, some of the names have been changed in the movie to, pr <coughs> to protect, to protect the innocent and to protect the film. Um, in the movie, um, uh, in the movie, Joyce's name is Beth, and um, and I think Ed's name. Oh no, it's Ed. Ed still keeps his own name, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, it's Ed Ed Horman and Beth Horman, and um, so yeah, so we get a lot of. You see Charles there, uh, played by John Shea, and um, you get a lot of his, you know, Charles's story through flashbacks and all that. Uh, he was visiting with a friend, Terry. Um, who's, I guess, like a reporter friend or something like that. And, yeah, they, he just goes missing, and he's um, some people say he was taken away by, you know, a government truck, and some people say, or like a military truck, and some people just say he was just basically kidnapped by other people. And so a lot of people were telling different stories. And, yeah, it was a very, very tough, uh, tough and trying time. Um, and yeah, that's basically that's all I've really got to say about this movie. Um, again, I, I love Jack Lemmon; he's a fantastic actor, and Sissy Spacek is amazing. And um, I liked. There's a bit with um, someone I like, uh, Harlan. What is his name? Gosh, I forget his name. Even though I liked him, uh, Hansford Hansford Rowe, who's in. Uh, you might recognize from he was in. He played I think Mike in uh, V, or and V the Final Battle, the miniseries, the TV miniseries, which I've bit of a fan of um so getting to see him i was like and it's been a while since i'd seen it and so when i saw his face i was like i recognize that dude so um yeah that, that was great to see him and uh, the soundtrack's great too um although the ending theme is a little repetitive um great vangelis and i guess it makes sense i didn't know costa garvis was uh greek and he has like a that's like i guess his 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 like performing name or American name or whatever, but his real name is like this long Greek thing. And um, so I guess it would make sense that he would hire a Greek musician like Vangelis, you know, maybe they're friends, maybe, it, I, I don't know. I think maybe he'd worked on his movies before. Um, 
and yeah, it's just really it's an interesting movie. Um, again, very very dark. Not um, not one for the not one for the faint of heart, especially with you know the bloodshed that you see, and it's uh, gratuitous violence. You know, um, obviously, you know, I mean, it's it was right, you know, to portray that because that's what was going on, you know, in the uh, and I and I really respect the movie makers for you know basically kind of scaring you know it's a very scary movie it's scaring the hell out of me just like you can't do anything you can't do anything in chile and that's the other thing that they mention is that you know because they were trying to protect the innocent and protect the film they don't mention a name in the country it's just some unnamed latin american country um although it's quite, because of the background it's quite obvious that it's chile um they mentioned vila at one point which was, I think, nearby. Um, so, yeah, so you get a lot of hinting around it, but you don't really get the explicit answer, which is, again, probably was probably in their best interest at the time. Um, yeah, but that's all I've got. Um, that's all I got to say about this movie. It's, a, again, very scary movie, very dark. Um, I'm going to give it an A-. Uh, I feel like, you know, I thought it made sense, you know, the... The aspect, and you know, I thought the performances. Jack Lemmon was just, you know, his dedication was, was just heartbreaking, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just again, it was just a fantastic movie. Um, an A minus. I just the minus was just I think a bit because of some of the again some of the score was a little repetitive. Um, and uh, unless you like Chuck Berry's My Dingling, you know, unless you like that, that's uh, features. <laughs> in one scene with Charles early in the film. Um, but yeah, this is an interesting, interesting film. So I give Missing an A-. Uh, I check this out at least once. Um, supplements. It's a two-disc. Uh, disc one just has a trailer. Disc two has everything else. Uh, there's an interview. There's two interviews with Costa Garvis. One made uh, shortly after the movie was made, and then one done in, I think, 2006 for a French, a French re-release of the film. And he talks about how, I guess... They wanted, they originally wanted Ed to be played by Ed Asner, and there's a scene um, where these uh, uh, government officials are talking to Ed, and one of them says, you know, that basically Charles deserved whatever he got coming to him because, um, because you know, you shouldn't have, he shouldn't have been just, he should have just been a citizen and just not got involved with all this political stuff summing up his feelings about the whole situation by, you know, uttering that famous phrase, uh, you play with fire and you're going to get burned or something like that. And uh, Costa Garvis mentions that if it had been at Asner, then he would have um, basically, he, he felt that Asner would have lashed out at this guy, and, you know, and he wanted, he didn't want that. He wanted Ed to be portrayed as this, you know, very, very emotionally drained man and, the way Jack Lemmon, when way Jack Lemmon just starts to kind of tear up at that scene, you know, I can see what he meant. You know, that I think, I think, you know, just kind of the the feeling of defeat is kind of a strong, a strong, um, a much stronger thing to film and portray than doing it. You know, than just you know the typical you know bloodlust and all that. So. Yeah, so um, so that was great. Uh, he's here in Costa Garvis. Uh, there's also an interview with the Joyce Horman, you know, the wife of Charles, the real, the real wife. Um, there's an excerpt from an interview from Cannes Film Festival back in 1982 with Jack Lemmon. Um, there's also uh, highlights from the 2002, what is this, The Truth Project, um, which are missing at Sissy Spacek and uh, Melanie Mayron, who I think who played um, what was her name. Um, what was her name? Oh gosh, I've already forgotten her name. Um, Terry and uh, John Shea himself, who played Charles. Um, there's also an interview with a producer and um, an interview with the guy who wrote the um, who wrote a uh, called the Pino file, uh, Pino Shea file. Um, Peter Kornbluth um, talking talks a little bit more about the history behind the military coup back in 1973 in Chile and how Charles Horman played into it. And um, that's basically all you got. So, again, a really fantastic package. Um, reminds me a lot of the background of all 
reminds me a lot of what was it um the battle of algiers i think it was just the way you get like you get the movie make the movie side of it and also the real life side of it too so if you're into if you're into historical dramas and you know all that i'd pick this one up missing gets an a minus from me a great very very dark but very very dark and scary film speaking of scary it's scary that i have to watch this guy again Oh, God, tomorrow's Bottle Rocket, guys. Oh, God, I don't want to watch another Wes Anderson film. But again, this ain't got Kate Blanchett in it. This ain't got, you know, um, Helen, no, that's, I was going to say Helena Bonham Carter's uh, uh, Tim Burton. Although I have to deal with her for one of those. She's in some Criterion movie. I can't stand her anyway. Um, What else? Yeah, so we got this. This is on its way. And then, um, and then next, and then later this week, um, probably Thursday, right after we do this, Thursday night we'll get started. Uh, the Eclipser will get started on the Kenji Mizoguchi's, um, the Kenji Mizoguchi's uh, film uh, Fallen Women set. And uh, then after that, again, we'll uh, we'll get next. It'll be next week probably. We'll get started on Fan Fan La Tulipe and the Spy Who Came In from the Cold. And, um, and of course, Chunking Express, which is burning a hole on my, uh, burning a hole on my thing and all that. Um, and then I'm looking, I'm looking to see if we, if, if anything came in, if, is anything, as anything came in? Just curious. Oh, yes, I know that. I know that. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, nothing's coming. Well, Fan Fan Love to Leap is, it's on its way. Spinal came in from the cold is on its way. Uh, Sisters of the... Guy on Street of Shame, Women of the Night. Uh, still waiting on, still waiting on Osaka Elegy. I may have to put another hold on a different copy because I don't want to be waiting on that one. And in fact, I may have to because it's well because it's an eclipse. I might see if it's on Hulu. I mean, not, not Hulu, not anymore Hulu. Um, see if it's on Filmstruck. I may have to get back on Filmstruck or uh, YouTube for that matter. Um, yeah, but anyway, fingers crossed we'll, we'll be stay on schedule and all that stuff. So anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't go to Chile, I guess, because you'll die. Um, <laughs> it feels so bad to say that, but you know, it's just I, I you know, it's 25 years. Well, was it 30, 35 years later? No, 40. No, wait, 45 years later. Wait, how long? Wait a minute. 1973, 83. 93. 45 years later. It's a mighty scary thing. So, anyway. Um, that's it for me. Thank you for watching, and we will see you all tomorrow for, hesitantly, Bottle Rocket. And until then, goodbye.